I want to go to college to get an education. If I have kids, I want kids to be in this environment. What? Like, around here. I mean, I want my kids to have better than what I had. I'm just so afraid for him. I cry for him sometimes, because I know he can easily be influenced to do things that he shouldn't do. I stayed back one grade, and I was in the second grade. Because my father had passed. Next year, Anthony's class will move up to junior high. Most will go to John Philip Sousa, which the Washington Post called an academic sinkhole. If Anthony goes to Sousa, odds are he will enter high school three to five grade levels behind. Anthony's class visits the Seed School, the first urban public boarding school in the country. To, to come to Seed, geography and luck, that's it. You have to live in the district, you have to pull out a um, bingo ball, call your number. It's bittersweet to me if I get in, they give me a better chance in life. But if I don't, I just, I just be with my friends. You see the cages up here. It's a random selection. You all have your numbers, right? Let's get started. Twenty. Ten. Hi, Black Tree Media. I'm here with Leslie Chilcott. We had the uh, pleasure of meeting on a Mikey Loud uh, red carpet before, but here you are with another great film. Um, and I heard you speaking earlier, and you said that you used to be a teacher. So that's, that's an interesting aspect, because it seems like teachers get left out in a conversation about education. What do you think we could do to give teachers better incentives? And, and shouldn't there be more social activism to make sure our teachers are getting paid something substantial since they have our kids? Absolutely. And I should clarify, I taught in Japan, so I'm sort of afraid to call myself an actual teacher because I only did it for a short time. But I have to tell you, what I learned when I was teaching in Japan was invaluable and changed the whole way I looked at the system here because even though I was only 22 years old, I taught businessmen and women, they all paid attention, they all studied. Studied. They all treated me with the utmost respect. And it wasn't because I was an amazing teacher. I was brand new. It's because it was culturally valued. And that's what you're talking about that we're missing. Teaching is one of the most important jobs in the world. We need to treat it that way. It's not community service. It is a profession. And we need to recruit the best. We need to support them. We need to pay them better. We need to reward them for good performance. And then we'll get the very, very best. And, and there are many, many good teachers already already in the system, but we need to inspire a whole new generation of teachers. How, how tied is the economy to the dropout rate and stuff? Because it seems like, you know, people going through college getting masters and PhDs and they're still working at the mall, you know, selling shoes. Like how, what's the, isn't there has to be a whole lot of things to go on to, to fix the failures in education? I think, you know, some people say, well, you can't have systemic change like this during a recession. It's just too hard. I think it's the time you have to have systemic change because if we are all more educated, we can solve poverty, we can solve global warming, we can fix what's wrong with the economy if everyone is educated to a certain level. But there are now metrics that show what happens to our GDP with a certain percentage of people get, you know, uh, graduate from college and get higher education and get degrees. So I think there's another unique thing that can happen in the recession. I think people that maybe study to be a lawyer or whatever it is and they don't have a job right now, they can turn their brilliant minds on education. We groom our best minds to go into finance. Let's groom some of our best minds to go into education. I think there should be legislation for full forgiveness of student loans for teachers doing, yeah. you know, going back and doing yeah. that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because, you know, it's a very good point, and Jeffrey Canada talks about this all the time. It's one thing if you come out of school and you owe $100,000, you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. But to do that and then be a teacher on a starting teacher salary, it's a wall that's preventing a lot of people from going into education. So we do need to look at that either through forgiveness or higher salaries. Thank you for your time Thank and you. please continue to produce these excellent pictures. Thank you.
I want to be a nurse, I want to be a doctor, and I want to be a veterinarian. She chose her college and she wrote a letter to the admissions and asking them to allow her to attend their college. I want to go to a medical college or a veterinarian college because I really want to become a surgeon. Think she can do it? Yeah. Daisy's path to medical school begins with eighth grade algebra, which she'll need to take when she moves up to Stevenson Middle School. By the time she leaves Stevenson, only 13% of her classmates will be proficient in math. Stevenson feeds into Roosevelt, one of the worst performing high schools in Los Angeles. Only three out of 100 students at Roosevelt will graduate with the classes necessary for admission to a four-year university. And 57% of Daisy's classmates won't graduate. Has your mom and dad told you about the lottery? The lottery isn't that when people play and they win money. <laughs> Daisy and her parents have found one other option. Eighth graders at Kip LA Prep get triple the classroom time in math and science. And by the time they finish eighth grade, they will have doubled their math and reading scores. Judith and Jose have decided to enter Daisy into the Kip lottery. Go like this, cross your fingers. I got a good feeling about this. The spaces with the X's is for all of the fifth grade students that are moving into the sixth grade for next year. Fregoso Andrew. Cabrera Alondra. Come on, Daisy, cross your fingers. Follow us.